Matt, so great to uh, to meet you via Zoom. How you doing? How are you holding up? I'm good. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, listen, this was truly one of the most inspiring documentaries I've watched uh -huh. in a long time. Thank you. Honestly, um, you know, I, I don't even know where to start. I, I was so moved by these kids. Um, and and not not just because they they were deaf. Honestly, their their resilience, their strength, just hit me so hard in my heart. Honestly, uh, I, I loved every minute of it. I wanted more. Why just thirty six minutes? Um, I mean, that's a good question. I mean, that's what our partners felt was you know the right punch to to for this film is to do it as a as a longer end of a short, but. Um, I mean, certainly it can be expanded into uh, a bigger story with more characters, which could happen. Yeah, you know, this yeah. could be the beginning of a of a of a larger Docker doc series for sure into a bigger world. Yeah, well, it's a great introduction, and like I said, I, I was wondering, you know, when I was watching, I was like, how did this eventually? How did it get on your radar? Because when with the opening of the the movie, uh, we see obviously they have a loss after forty two wins. Yeah, the first loss. You can't predict that. You can't tell them uh, to lose. So tell me how this all got started and that you were shooting this. Well, that was that just was happenstance um, in terms of catching that game. I mean, we knew it was an important game and that we were going to target that as one of the games we were going to film. But um, how I came about it is interesting. I grew up only about 30 miles away from the school. I'm from Washington, D.C., Maryland area. Yeah. And this is in Frederick, Maryland. Um, so I grew up 30 miles away. My best friend who didn't go to this school went to my school. My best friend since I was eight years old is deaf. And so I had a little bit of a familiarity with the deaf community through that. Um, and then I also just by happenstance, <laughs> I direct commercials as well as documentaries. Yeah. And one of the first commercials I ever did was a series on different high school football teams around the country. And that was one of them. So it was just, I land this commercial that's shooting near where I grew up, my best friend's deaf, and it just stuck with me. And I stayed in touch with the school for 10 years to try to get this made. Amazing. And then you focus in on some of these kids. And I, I want to, you know, Amari, I mean, like I said to you earlier, they're, they're just also inspiring and yeah. um, amazing, amazing people. But how did you establish trust? Because they really open up to you. Um, I think just time and experience, having done a lot of docs before with people from around the world uh, in various cultures, various ages, um, that I guess, I mean, humbly um just a lot of it is just listening mm -hmm. you know um it's just process of of getting to know anyone whether you're making a film about them or you know you're developing a some form of a relationship um and some of it's intuitive and some of it's intentional and um but genuinely having empathy for someone and finding something in them that you connect with yeah. And then even sharing of yourself so they connect with you. So the process of that uh, relationship begins before the cameras are rolling. Right. Yeah. And what was your um, communication experience like? Uh, like you say, your best friend was deaf. Are you, uh, do you know sign language or did you have an interpreter there with you? How did it all go down? I mean, I, I filmed things all over the world and realized quickly that I can't learn every language, you know, because I don't focus on one culture. Um, but, you know, I figured out over the years and it evolves and changes per project, a little bit of a process, both with interpreters, but also just literally technically how I'm listening to get the info in real time, mm -hmm. you know, a little bit of a cross between humanity and technology to still connect with them. But I also look at it as a challenge. That's a filmmaking challenge. Um, and part of, if you want to call it an obstacle to connect with someone. Um, so I, I look at it as another culture, community, language, like anything else. Uh, I did have a little bit of familiarity, like I said, 
my friend being deaf, mm -hmm. but also me and my producer, Jeff McLean, who actually happens to be Canadian from Toronto. Huh. I'll have to look him up. <laughs> he, uh, he and I took a, a bunch of uh, sign language courses. Yeah. Um, in the in a couple months leading up to shooting while we were prepping just to to learn the basics at least um to have you know some basic conversation and um not that i could get fluent that fast but sure. it shows some respect as well oh absolutely um what ended up challenging you the most making this documentary hmm There's a lot going on because it's not just the game and you know what the cheerleaders go through and what the what they go through as players but just their yeah. personal stories and i mean i like i games. guess like any doc you follow is it's happening in real time and, and we can't predict what's going to happen and you know i i, I for this one i kind of didn't let a lot of challenges get in my way rather than just embrace them a bit. And like, I didn't know they were going to lose that game. Right. It's bad for them. Good for story. They come back and win the next game against a hearing team. Yes. Um, but, well, and also their reaction behind the scenes because how hard they took that, you know, yeah. they, they, they were on this great win streak and then boom. I sort of like looked at this as a, we're capturing a pivotal moment of their lives, you know, coming of age, senior year of high school. Right. Um, and just embraced whatever they were going through rather than look at anything as a challenge. I mean, there's the normal production challenges of budget, time, you know, a camera going down, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just sort of, I feel like we just sort of made it Rather than us observing them, we're letting them tell their story. Mm -hmm. And so whatever happened, happened. Yeah, a lot happened, honestly. You know? like I, yeah. Um, and how did, uh, you know, Peter Berg is one of the uh, producers. How did he get involved? Um, yeah, I have a relationship with his company, Film 45, which is their Pete's, um, unscripted company yeah and um was developing several projects with them and you know with his connection to sports and and friday night lights the film and the series right it, it was a clear fit um that he just connected with the subject matter you know um and it just made sense um and then on the other side of the coin having niall demarco yes who's deaf and a deaf advocate and, and known in the deaf community uh, covering sort of that side of it, um, making sure, and he was very involved in making sure that um, we were making this film, not just for the hearing audience, but for the deaf audience as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's interesting because you look at something like Sound of Metal, for example, and how much attention a movie like that is getting, which I which I thought was a phenomenal film. Um, and it really did give you a sense of what being deaf feels like. I grew up with deaf, uh, a deaf aunt and uncle. So when I, you know, from when I was a little girl, that's all I knew. They were like yeah. that, you know, my whole life. And um, I tried to get a sense of you know what they go through and how, how hard it is but they were very resilient too and then i look at a film like sentimento and then i look at something like this and i go wow these kids are just they they just see themselves as completely normal i they i are, they, they are they, normal yeah exactly yeah they are normal like they just can't hear but they make they, they don't care they make the best of it you know they're normal they just might be a little better at football <laughs> Exactly, exactly. By the way, I met with the director of Sound of Metal. Serious. He, yeah, 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 when he yeah. was in, through a mutual friend, when he was in post going through sound design and I was about to go into production, um, we had lunch here in Los Angeles. Just I wanted to pick his brain. Yeah, um, yeah he was very helpful. Um, yeah. 
he, yeah. He, yeah, I interviewed him. And, and ironically enough, that movie premiered here in Toronto at the film festival and you're getting your premiere at Hot Docs. Yeah. Uh, how, how important is that to you be, to be part of Hot Docs and have this? Because look, I mean, everyone, what I love about Audible is that it's going to be on Netflix and it will be accessible to so many people because so many documentaries aren't. So that's fantastic. But Hot Docs, that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> I've never played at Hot Docs. I've played everywhere else and it's always been on my bucket list because it's the premier documentary film festival. Um, I've also filmed a lot in Canada so I have a special sort of, it's a special place for me. I, I, I'm even represented by a company called Suniva out of Toronto uh, that represents me for commercials up there and love filming up there yeah. and, and, and production up there. So um, I'm really excited. I think it's, it's a great venue for it. I wish I could be there in person. So do uh, I. Yeah. But next time, but I'm really excited. It's just, um, it's, it's an honor. I'm really humbled to, to, to be able to premiere there. And, and um, it's a prestigious festival, you know? Yeah, no, it's a great festival. So many great, great films. Um, at the end of the day, Matt, I'm wondering, you know, after working on something like this, so yes, you've been in the business for a while and you've done so many projects. How does, how does working on something like this change you as a person or make you think about yourself? And, you know, our, our problems aren't really all that bad. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, this is probably the most special project I've been part of. One is because I came up with a version of it, you know, 10 years beforehand, um, my first year of directing commercials. So... And I think it was my first time doing a documentary that year. So I, I've been sitting with it the longest for a reason and couldn't let it go for a reason and put a lot into it. Um, and also because of where it is and my connection through my friend who's deaf. So it probably is, even though I'm not deaf, my most personal film in a way. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, I learned from, from, the, the humanity and the people that I'm documenting and their resilience and putting life in perspective. But um, man, how their resilience taught me a lot. Um, and they don't, at least these kids, I'm not talking about the deaf community. I can't Absolutely. speak to that. Yeah, yeah. These kids felt like they, they're not disabled and they, they, wouldn't ha they, they wouldn't want to hear, they wouldn't want to go back. And right. they also, um, it's a culture and a community. You know, sign language is a language. That's right. And so, you know, you, you, they consider themselves part of a very strong and rich culture, um, which I love. I mean, the school, Maryland School for the Deaf is the second oldest deaf school in the country. I think it's like 140. 52 years old or something so oh, amazing yeah I, I as I'm watching it I, I kept thinking about you know they're in this environment where everybody is deaf but when they have to graduate and go into the real world I was thinking that and then of course it is addressed you know in the film um do, do they talk about that a lot like you know are they do they get nervous about stuff like that sure. um, I'm just curious sure. Um, I mean, you have, it depends who you're talking to. You have Amari who was not born deaf. Right. And meningitis. So he goes home on weekends and is around hearing parents. So he's a little more used to it maybe than someone that's in an all deaf family, which right. those characters like that as well. So it runs the gamut of, of where you come from, nature and nurture. Uh, your level of hearing or hearing loss as well. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly you're going into a, a wider world. And as we know today, more than ever, that's not always accepting of people that are different. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so they're, they're going to be faced with challenges. They're going to be faced with bullying. Question is, that's what you can't control. What you can control is how you respond to it and I think coach Ryan and the superintendent Mr. Tucker and and the administration and, and a lot of the parents and and football uh is helping to prepare them 
And that's where the resilience, I mean, as the coach says in the film, you know, it's, it's, it's how you respond to it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I think you've done an extraordinary job. As I said, I, I, I was so riveted by it and, and it moved me just so much. And I just wish you best of luck with it at Hot Docs and of course on Netflix. And I'm just, I'm happy to get, to get the word out. And, and I just really Thank want you, to Bonnie. see this. I really appreciate talking it's, to you. Oh, me too. Thank you so much for your time today, Matt. I really appreciate it. And, and maybe, you know, one day when those borders open, we can have a share a coffee together in Toronto when you come back. Okay? I'll be up there soon. I hope so. I'll be up there soon. <laughs> Yeah. Good stuff. All right. Well, best of luck with everything. Thank you for your time and uh, have, have a good rest of your day today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks okay. for everything. Okay. You Thank too. You, bye. 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 Big kiss. Okay.